Welcome back everybody, I am Wild and I'm getting ready to share all of my electronics, my camera gear, and all the tools that I will be using to vlog and share this epic journey with you as I attempt to hike the Appalachian Trail. That's coming up next. Now everything I'm about to share is not the latest and greatest or the lightest of items that I could take along with me. Instead of going along and listing weights for everything, I'm going to put links to all the items I'm about to share in the description below so you can go ahead and check those out yourself. I will weigh everything at the end so you know how much weight it's taking up in my pack, including my battery bank. You're going to get a real kick out of that. With that being said, let's get started. First item I want to share is my Spot Gen 3 GPS tracking device. In short, this is 4.7 ounces of peace of mind for my family. Uh, typically on the Appalachian Trail, you don't need to carry anything other than a cell phone. You will have cell phone coverage for most of the trail, probably 90 plus percent of the trail if you're using Verizon as a carrier. But in short, with a device like this, on those days that I will not have any cell phone coverage or I'm staying down in a gap or off the beaten path, my family is going to be worried about me being out there. So this is peace of mind for them. The most important thing that you could do with a tool like this is the SOS function. This is driven by satellites, not cell phone towers. So in short, the most important thing you can do with this type of device is this is waterproof. You pull back the cover and you press the SOS button. That is what you would do if you had no cell phone coverage and you were immobilized out in the wilderness. Broken leg, something of that nature. But again, with the Appalachian Trail, there's almost commonly going to be somebody passing me every couple hours. I'm going to be close to road crossings, towns, and things of that nature. Where the peace of mind comes in for my family is this allows, this is a cheaper version, this allows one-way communication from me to my family via satellite. And what you can do is you can set up some predetermined text messages in here. The first one here I have programmed for, and this would be if I didn't have cell phone coverage where I'm at at the time. I would usually send a text message, of course, through my phone. But with this type of device, I can press the OK button. And how I have that set up is it sends through the satellite. It will text message and email my loved one with the time, my GPS coordinates, and my predetermined message of I love you and I'm OK. It also has the ability of having two other predetermined text messages on this device. And the other one is that I have, this is where I'm staying tonight, I'm okay. Again, it gives the coordinates of exactly where I'm at. And there is also a tracking function. If I were to activate the tracking function, my loved ones, they're able to download an app on their cell phone. When I activate this, it has predetermined uh, tracking time, such as it could send a tracking notification every 10 minutes every 30 minutes and they can actually watch on their cell phone and track exactly where I'm at. Peace of mind for my family, I am going to take it along because I don't want them to worry about me. 4.7 ounces, um, staying connected, it's worth it to me. My cell phone, an iPhone 6S. Yes, would somebody please insert a laugh track someplace? <laughs> there are some very specific reasons why I still have this phone. It has to do with the business that I'm in. Not going to talk about it right now. This actually has 128 gigabytes of storage on it. It allows me to do a great job with file management via Bluetooth when I'm transferring files over from my GoPro, which I'll mention here in just a few minutes. Um, for those of you, family and friends, who've never heard of the Gut Hook app, it's actually a navigational app that tells me basically everything about the Appalachian Trail, where I'm at, important information such as shelter areas, where I can get water, all the details in that Gut Hook app. Also, I have, there are some hard copy guides that are used commonly with hikers on the Appalachian Trail. This is the AT guide, the 2020 version. I have a PDF file version of that on my phone. And I also have a PDF file of the Hikers Companion, which is produced by Alda. Two great um, informational guides for hiking the AT. I'm also going to take one quarter, I'm gonna tear off a quarter section of the AT guide Carry along with me because if my phone goes down, I'm going to need that information. So I will be carrying the hard copy guide along. Also on my phone, I'm going to enjoy music, movies, uh, give a new meaning of Netflix and chill. It's called Netflix and be chilly in your tent when it's 10 degrees out. Uh, so I'll be listening to music, podcasts, all of that here on my iPhone 6S. Still works. I don't need to upgrade. One thing I do want to mention, the stability on this while shooting moving uh, video is horrible. And that's why I picked up my GoPro. We'll talk about that here in a second. Next couple of tools I want to share as far as vlogging are two items. One is my Manfrotto cell phone clamp and two is my Pedco 
UltraPod Mini. Just to give you an idea of the usage for these two items. Number one, the Manfrotto clamp. Not only can it attach here on the bottom, um, but it can also attach from the side. So it gives you two different mounting standpoints there on the Manfrotto clamp. And there are rubber inserts on the inside of the clamp that really helps things be stable, grip the phone firmly, but it also has a positive lock on it. So you can take and you can mount your phone on there and your phone is not going anywhere. One cool thing about the UltraPod Mini, and I first discovered this when I had interviewed Frozen at Pine Grove Furnace last year, Frozen with Outdoor Adventures during his half gallon challenge. And when he first popped this thing out and sat it down on the table, I'm like, what's that little thing? And he says, oh, let me show you the uses for this. So after he demonstrated everything to me in about probably two hours after the interview, I went home that's like the first item that I had ordered. So what's really cool about this, not only does it have a small tripod, so you can set the phone down or uh, your GoPro on a rock, do walk through, uh, walking towards shots, whatever you choose, um, shots on a timer. But you can also fold this up and you can take, if you look for branches, no larger than maybe the size of your wrist, check this out. You can actually take it, and hopefully I can do this here quickly. You take this piece of Velcro, and you're gonna strap your tripod against that tree or your branch. And what you have here is you have a mount to film yourself for your walkthrough shots, walk away shots. You can do it hanging down like this. You can do it nice and solid this way. The possibilities are endless. You can even attach this to your trekking pole and use your trekking pole as a selfie, selfie stick, or you could even strap this to a railing. The possibilities are almost endless with this Pedco UltraPod Mini. I absolutely love this thing. The only thing that I would caution you on is, um, the feet on here have rubber caps on the end, and what I would do if I were you, if you purchase one, I'd pull the caps off, put a little bit of silicone in there, and push it back on. I've actually lost the one rubber foot. But other than that, this has been absolutely an invaluable piece of tool, and I also can mount my GoPro on this UltraPod Mini. This is one of my favorite pieces of kit. Now, if you just notice a difference in the video quality or the lighting, I'm now filming with my iPhone 6S. Everything up to this point in the video was shot with my GoPro Hero 7 Black. Main reason I invested in this piece of equipment is, is because, like I mentioned earlier, the stability on my iPhone 6S while shooting motion, while walking with the camera was absolutely terrible. I tried everything to resolve that and uh, it simply couldn't be done. The stability, the stabilization on the GoPro Hero 7 Black has like butter. And I wanna make sure that not only am I shooting great footage for you, but I'm also shooting that footage to have those great memories for myself and for my family. So unfortunately, with the GoPro Hero 7 Black, if you've done any amount of research, there are some problems with this. Now I've done all the software updates and everything is as up to date as I can get. Unfortunately, this has been plagued with issues such as mysterious battery drain. That being, after I'm certain this is turned off and I store it overnight, I get it out the next day, go to turn it on, and the battery was just drained dead for no apparent reason. Also, it has occasionally froze up on me when I'm trying to use it. Usually, when you're turning it different directions, that's when it will freeze up. And then you have to pull it out of the case, pull the battery out, and reset everything. And it does get to be about a half a pain in the butt sometimes. Uh, but that being said, I love this thing. It's absolutely fantastic. It shoots uh, fantastic footage and has some great features. I'm also bringing along a, a very lightweight foam windscreen. I'm hoping that this is gonna save some of the wind noise when I'm up filming on some of the peaks. Haven't really experimented with this yet, although I did watch some reviews, so this should really help me out. Also, I have added protective lens cover, kind of like your cell phone that you buy, and also added one of those protective screen um, covers for the back to help um, kind of um, endure a little bit of abuse while it's in and out of the bag and out in the elements. Uh, across the board, the GoPros are uh, known for being waterproof as well, so it'll really resist the weather. Also picked up a little lens cap there when I put it in the bag at night. As far as memory cards, I'm carrying three micro SD cards and I'm storing those in these SD adapters because you can see how small a micro SD card is. So not only do I not want to lose it, but I also want to protect it from the elements. So I'm actually bringing three of these along uh, for the ride for, for storage for, for video and photographs. Also bring in an extra mount for the base just in case that breaks. This weighs virtually nothing. And also I'm bringing a Telesten, uh, let me see here, Telesten, if I'm saying that right, 
It is a triple battery charger. I'm bringing a total of three batteries along. And what I like about this is I can place the batteries on the inside, close it, gives it a little bit of protection from the elements, and you plug in your USB-C cord on the back and you can charge them all at the same time. So three memory cards, three batteries, and that covers my GoPro. Headphones I'm bringing along is a simple pair of factory iPhone headphones. I'm not going to lose any sleep if I lose these or they become damaged. They also have a built-in microphone, which really helps with recording if I need to use my iPhone. And they sound pretty good. My headlamp I'm bringing is the Nightcore NU25 headlamp. And I purchased this from Lightsmith. They offer an option of getting rid of the wide headband that comes with these. And they offer a really cool shock cord mod with a locking cord lock on the end. You can choose your choice of color. Um, that's by Lightsmith. I'll put a link down in the description. Or if you prefer it with a water headband and save a few dollars and do your own mod, I'll have that link as well for Amazon. There are three different LEDs in this headlamp. Go ahead and share them with you real quick. We have four different brightnesses. One the white. There's the lowest. Next one up. Next one up. And it also has a turbo mode for that. And I'm also going to press and hold. It'll turn on the other white LED right here. This is perfect for map, map reading and the light is much softer than the very bright vivid white LEDs. You also have two different settings for red which is perfect for in the tent or moving about in a shelter. You don't want to have a bright light on in the middle of the night or uh, you're going to be unwelcome if you get up for a pee break and you're doing that. And also it has multiple distress modes. It can flash an SOS. It can give a white location beacon. It can also give a red location beacon. It is USB chargeable. And if you press and hold both buttons on the top, it will actually lock the buttons out. So when you're storing this in your pack, it won't accidentally turn on and discharge. Maximum brightness on this is 360 lumens, up to 88 yards of nighttime hiking. That's really awesome. And also the runtime on it on the brightest setting is 30 minutes on the brightest and 160 minutes on the lowest white setting. Nightcore NU25. Charging cables. I'm technically only going to be bringing two charging cables with me. The first one is going to be my USB-C to USB-C. I'll be using that to charge my power delivery power bank, which I'm going to share in just a moment. And also, I have a three-way charging plug here. This is USB, and it also is capable of charging micro USB, USB-C, and also my cell phone. One important note, you cannot use this to charge three items at the same time. Only one item charging at one time or things will start shutting off. My power bank that I'm bringing along for the journey is the RAV Power 26,800 milliamp hour power delivery battery bank. It features two standard USB outputs, which has the iSmart technology. It has a USB-C output. It also has a micro USB output. Uh, with enough power to power a small city, this is going to help keep all of my electronics, including my GoPro, all the batteries, my phone, um, enable me to do all the editing that I need on a trail. Um, the reason why I've chosen such a large battery is I took the advice of Frozen when he vlogged his 2019 Appalachian Trail through hike. He said he wished he had a larger battery bank so he could be out on a trail longer and he wouldn't have to come in town. This should allow me to stay out on a trail an extra day or two. Um, that's going to give me more Nero's and more time hiking versus coming into town. And under the old type of technology, a battery bank of this size will probably take 12 to 14 hours to recharge. With a new power delivery technology, I can recharge just from zero in about five and a half hours. In order to do that, you must have a special um, charger for that. This is the Anchor Power Port 2. It has retractable um, 110 uh, volt outlet inputs on so it doesn't tear up your bag. You just simply retract that and it has the power delivery output on it. This is capable of putting out a total of 30 watts in charging, 18 watts to the power delivery USB-C, which will go directly into the USB-C on this power port. Um, they do make a smaller version of this that has the power delivery output alone on it, but I wanted to go with the extra outlet because if I come into a crowded outlet, it gives me the ability to kind of slide in there, plug this in, start charging my power bank, and I can allow a family member or someone else to piggyback off of this. So instead of waiting in line, this may put me to the front of the queue as far as charging. That is the Anchor PowerPort 2. So there you have it, everybody. All the electronics that I'm going to be using to communicate, 
navigate and document this epic journey. Let's go ahead and throw it on the scale real quick. You can see that everything comes in at two pounds, 12 ounces, excluding my cell phone, which I'm actually gonna claim as my worn weight. If anyone has any questions regarding any of the items that I shared, feel free to post your questions in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay up to date when I release my next video. Thank you so much everybody for watching Wild on the Trail and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care everyone.